Ben Kaylee here with the Hobby Lobby Creative Studio. Have you ever wanted to try your hand at painting but just didn't know where to get started? Never fear, because today I'm going to give you a rundown on paintbrushes and get you one step closer to creating your very own masterpiece. First off, let's go over the anatomy of a paintbrush real quick. Here you've got your handle, crimp, ferrule, and bristles or hair. The crimp connects the handle to the ferrule, which holds the bristles in place and is typically made of metal. The bristles themselves are broken down into the heel, the belly, and the toe. Now if you look at a brush's handle, you'll usually see a number printed there. See that? The length, diameter, and width of the bristles determine this number within each brand of paintbrushes. Notice how I said within each brand? That's because there's no industry standard when it comes to numbering these guys. A number six brush in one brand, for example, is not necessarily the same size as a number six brush in another brand. So just keep that in mind, because it could get kind of confusing otherwise. Something else that's pretty important is what kind of bristles or hair your brush has. Traditionally, brushes were made with hair from animals like hogs, badgers, camels, oxen, and sables. But today, synthetic bristles are leading the pack in popularity and availability. That's because manufacturers are now better able to make synthetic bristles that replicate the benefits of natural hair. This gives artists the performance of animal hair combined with the durability and affordability of synthetic bristles. For example, natural hair tends to hold on to paint better for a more slow and even release of pigment. Now, good synthetic bristles can do that too. And because synthetic bristles are typically made from nylon or polyester, they also stand up to oil and acrylic paints, cleaning solvents, and rough painting surfaces. For more help choosing just the right brush for your painting project, take a walk down the paintbrush aisle at Hobby Lobby. There you'll find placards with specific information on the brushes available. When it comes down to it though, picking the sizes and bristles or hair types of your brushes is mainly a personal preference, so do whatever feels best for you. All right, now let's get into brush shapes. The most common types are flat, bright, filbert, angular, fan, round, liner, and mop. How about I break each one of these brushes down for you and show you what they can do. First up is the flat brush, appropriately named for its wide set, flat arrangement of bristles. The one I have here is pretty large, but you can get them in a bunch of sizes. Flat brushes produce a range of strokes, from thin lines to bold strokes. They also work for painting large areas and for blending. To make this mountainscape, we used a combination of flat brush techniques. Brights are pretty similar in style to flat brushes, but their bristles are shorter. That makes them really good for smaller, controlled strokes. Brights are also commonly used for blending on a smaller scale, laying on the paint nice and thick, or subtly switching back and forth from thin to thick strokes. With just this one brush, we were able to create this realistic water here. The filbert brush has a characteristically oval shape, which makes it a really diverse brush. For example, filberts can hold a lot of water, so they're good for washes. Plus, their bristles stay together well when wet, so you can use them for smooth blending and stroking. I really like this brush for painting leaves, flowers, figures, and other elements like this pineapple. Remember that flat brush we used earlier? Well, this brush is a variation on the classic flat and is called an angular brush because it has, you guessed it, angled bristles. Its clean cut edges make precise strokes and coloring in tight spots a cinch. Angular brushes work well for curves too. Look at how all these strokes from an angular brush came together to create this flower. Next up is the easily recognized fan brush. Its fanned out bristles are perfect for soft blending and smoothing without harsh lines. And don't forget about the textures fan brushes are capable of. They're a popular choice for making realistic grass and trees, like these examples here. Round brushes are next on our list. These are excellent for a variety of techniques, including thick to thin lines, washes, and fills. See how easy it is to get that variation in line width? This brush I have here is pretty standard, but you can also find pointed round and detail round brushes like these, which will give you a wider variety of effects. 
To make this greenery, I just pushed down with my round brush and let up as I moved out from the center. This thin brush I have here is called a liner. You can use it for intricate outlining and detailing, and it's a great brush for lettering too. Liner brushes can actually hold a good amount of paint for being so little, which is how you can create both smooth, continuous strokes and many short, fine detailed strokes. See how we use those for our bear's fur? Check out this guy. It's called a mop brush, and its soft bristles are most often used for adding color over large areas and for softening harsh edges as well. If you've added too much water or medium to your project, you can use the mop brush to remove it. Try dabbing a mop brush to create fun texture or twirl it to create perfect circles like I've done with these grapes. Isn't it great that there are so many brush options? If you don't know which ones to choose, you could always pick up an affordable variety pack with several different kinds and find the sizes and types you like best. Okay, before I go, I wanna give you a couple basic tips for caring for your brushes so that you get the most use out of them. First off, don't let paint dry onto your brushes, bristles, or ferrule. Clean them mid-project if you have to. You'll also want to avoid letting brushes sit in water because that will cause them to warp, bend, and fray. After they're clean, let them dry horizontally. Watercolor and acrylic paints can be cleaned off brushes with water and, if necessary, hand soap. For oil paints, though, you'll need a cleaning solvent since water just won't cut it. Remember to follow the precautions on the container and you're good to go. Who knew there was so much to learn about paintbrushes? I hope this gave you the confidence to start your next or first painting project. For more tutorials and inspiration, be sure to check out our other videos and I'll see you next time here at the Hobby Lobby Creative Studio.